All right, so what we're going to be doing is creating a document in this one, going through some of the, the tools, the menus, things like that. So what we have is we're in our, again, our drive, our docs list here. <clears throat> and over on the left-hand side, we have the word create. So we hit create, and up pops a variety of different things. So we can create a new folder from here. We can create a new document, presentation, spreadsheet, form, drawing from here, and I've added Wii Video. And so you can connect more apps and create <clears throat> within your Google Drive, but that's kind of getting uh, to the next step here. So we're just going to start with creating a new document. So we create a new document, and what it looks like here is it's just a word processor um, for the most part. The toolbar is very similar to what you would see in Microsoft. Um, and so what we're going to start, we're going to start at the top and kind of work our way down. So right now this is untitled. It's an untitled document. So we'll click on it, and this is my trial document. All right, and so I've renamed it. All right, now you'll notice that all changes are saved in Drive, and so as long as there's an internet connection, things will save automatically, basically after you, every time you stop typing. And so that's a nice piece. There is no file save or anything like that, and so it saves automatically. Now you'll also notice in Google they'll allow you to do things multiple ways, and so there's keyboard shortcuts. There's also things on the in the menu here. You have your toolbar here. Um, there's multiple ways to share, things like that. And so you'll notice that um, as that will come up here eventually. And so as we start just creating a document, sharing will come next. So let's just create. You'll notice that you can just type in this document. So we can type in this document. And it looks, again, like a word processor. You can do whatever you want with it, bold, underline, whatever. And so. I'm not going to get into this piece. What I will get into is the file menu and uh, some of the other tools menu, things like that. And so in the file menu, you would say we've created a document, things like that. Um, once you create a document, it goes right to your docs list. And so it's a trial document there. And so that's how I would access it at any time. But in the, in the file menu, what we have here is we have the ability to, to share, which will be sh in, in another video here, but also create new documents right within this document so I don't have to go back, back out to my docs list, go to create, I can do it straight from here. You can also open from here as well. Another spot to rename, all it does is brings back this, so if I were to click on this, it shows this, or I can go to file, rename, and so multiple ways to do things. The file make a copy it is very, very important. Um, and the reason why it's important is if you're sharing, let's say you have a worksheet um, with for your students, and you obviously don't want to, when you share, you don't want everybody to be collaboratively writing answers on it. And so uh, what your students will do a lot of times is at the, at the top here, you know, we'll type in go to file, make a, a copy. And so... Um, they'll just make a copy of this and, and as you see sharing this might become a little more clear but they'll make a copy of this document and then it's theirs to do whatever and edit and to do whatever they want with it and so they would go to file make a copy as soon as they were to open up a, a document or if you get something and you would want to edit it but don't want the other person to see kind of maybe some of those edits um, or you just want, want it for yourself just go to file make a copy and what it'll say is, it'll call it a copy of trial document. You can rename that to whatever you want. And then just click OK. And now you have your own document. Okay. You can also move things to folders from here um, as you start creating folders to keep organized. Now the revision history is, is pretty important. So as um, you start working on it and you get multiple save points, you can um, actually see what revisions were made and you can restore back to certain revisions and so I just restored back to that that uh, revision and so we can see the different let's say so I, I screwed up and I'm like well I want to get back to this we can click on the different versions and see now you'll, you'll notice that there are different colors in this revision history. So I'm green. So um, 
as I click on this, you can see what I typed. That's in green. So if you have multiple people working on the document, they will be in multiple colors, therefore seeing what they've all done. And uh, it's very, very, uh, if you have multiple students working on a document, you can see who did the work and who did most of the work and if it was equal or, what, or not or any work at all. And so the revision history is, is very important to especially collaborative documents or if you've screwed up your document it's just a way to get back to a previous version. The download as is can be an important piece as well so let's say you have somebody that uh, maybe is not comfortable looking at Google Docs or doesn't want it as a Google Doc or whatever you can download this as either a Word file a rich text file a PDF so uh, for instance, they can download this as a Word file, click on it. I'm just going to put it on my desktop, hit save. And now it's it's saving it as a Word document. So I can actually take this document and work on it in Microsoft Word. And so now I can type in this document. Okay, so I, I typed in this document in Microsoft Word. I can do things in it there. Sometimes maybe it's playing with the formatting a little bit or uh, making it nicer, adding borders, things like that. You can uh, do that as well. But you'll notice that the edits I made in Microsoft Word, so I typing in Word, you'll notice that they did not, they're not reflected in my Google Doc. These, this Word document and this Google document are not connected. And so therefore, any changes I make will not be reflected in this Google document and vice versa. So when I um, so when I do this, so I say typing in Google, you'll notice that it is not reflected in Word as well. So they are not connected. So just know that in, in the download as, but you can also keep a hard copy of it uh, saved on your server somewhere or on a hard drive or USB or whatever. Uh, it's just kind of a nice way to maybe save some of that. And Formatting is pretty good going from Google Docs to Microsoft Word. Now, publishing, publishing to the web will allow you to basically take away all of this editing stuff around here. And so if I hit Publish to the web, it'll ask me, um, what do I want? I don't want to require viewers to sign in. I just want to hit Start Publishing. It'll ask me, are you sure? I click OK. And now what it gives me, it gives me a link here. And so I can take this link, I can copy it, and if this is the link I want to give to my students or whatever, I can do that, um, post to a website, things like that. But once what this will look like is, I'll just paste this in a browser here, it looks like this. Okay, you know, notice that this is updated automatically every five minutes. So if I start making some changes, this link never changes. And so the updates will come on this web page. And so it's kind of nice, takes away the uh, editing and, and things like that and gives people the opportunity to see it just as a web page versus as a Google document. You'll want to note that publishing a document does not affect its visibility option, which is in your share settings. So when I click on share, here's my visibility right here. And so I should make it public on the web, otherwise people would have to sign in. So anytime you really want to publish things to the web, you should probably make it public unless you want them to sign in to see it, etc., or give them only access to that um, privately. But just know that uh, if you're going to share it with m a lot of people, probably public on the web, publish to the web, and it'll look like a, just a regular web page. And so we'll go over that in sharing once again. Now the page setup is uh, a spot where a lot of questions come into me as to again how do you change your orientation how do you change the margins things like that and that's all in page setup so if you want to change your page orientation to landscape you do that in page setup as well as your margins if you want to change your margins page color letter size you can see you can read there obviously but that is where a lot of questions come in and so kind of make a mental note of you know orientation margins page color paper size are all in page setup now, edit menu is pretty self-explanatory. The view menu, again, self-explanatory. Insert should be your friend if you want to start inserting images, links, things like that. Notice that some of this stuff is also on the toolbar. Um, you can insert links here. You can insert comments. Some of that stuff is there. But anytime you want to add something or insert something to your document, check out the Insert tab. 
Formatting is basically all on your toolbar as well. Now the tools piece is interesting. It has um, a couple cool features here, and here's your spelling. There's no spelling suggestions, but if I were to um, spell um, copy wrong, hit tools, hit spelling, it'll tell me that uh, maybe we should change it, just basically similar to Microsoft. Now notice it's just a spelling, not a grammar uh, correction. Now your research tab allows you to um, take the, your document and have another page open up next to it. And so we can go type in Minnesota Twins and it'll be, do a Google search of Minnesota Twins. Now know that, um, and then it can open up, for instance, Wikipedia and it'll bring me to Wikipedia. Or I can take, uh, some people like to use images in their documents. It's a good way to bring in images. I could take and drag an image into my document and it'll show up. It'll actually even cite it for me at the bottom where it came from. And so that uh, can be done there as well uh, with images, information. So it's kind of a research tab over on the right hand side. You also have over here a define, um, which can be actually access tools define. You can do it that way. Or you have a little drop down menu here as well. Um, so the dictionary and we'll to find the word copy since that's the one we were. So you can look up different things there. Uh, just accessing basically dictionary.com uh, for that. Word count, that stuff's in there as well. Uh, preferences, nothing to really be um, concerned about at this moment. Inserting a table, much like Microsoft Word, gives you the uh, option to select your grid. And so Pretty easy there on just uh, editing a document and, and if you know and understand Google documents, creating a document, presentations, spreadsheets, and somewhat forms really kind of falls into place there as uh, a lot of things are in the same spot, a lot of those same options are there and if you're familiar with the Microsoft uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, the Google versions are not as difficult to catch on to. So, um, that's just creating a document and you can watch the next video they'll go through sharing a document.